My man Bradley is making moves. Damon John's going to come in and we're going to get on a webinar with five to 7,000 people and teach them how to nail their pitch, go from an idea to an actual business, and then blow it up. So how do you take an idea, bring it to an actual business, figure out how to attract investors, nail your pitch, and blow the whole thing up? It's going to be badass. Damon, being the philanthropic individual he is, agreed to come in here and help me put this webinar on. If you have a creative mindset instead of a competitive mindset, you're going to introduce things to this world which allows you to win and succeed. When the skill shop's ready and this is like fucking ding, 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 it's going to go boom. And dude, you can't get that with Litmos, you can't get that with all these other ones. The cooler and slicker and easier we make everything, the faster this will go down. Then we have a hundred companies that are all cross-pollinated with the skill shop. Then we have 200, then, then we get business just because of the skill shop. Then we start standalone skill shop. We start producing our own content where I want to shut down production for clients. I'll just do it myself. I'll be writing all these modules. We just be pumping them out and then we close deals with free content, including content, buy content. Next thing you know, we're doing about $100 million a month, $1.2 billion a year, and then Warren Buffett or somebody comes in here and says, BL, you want to get loose? And I'm going to say real loose. Frank! Get him back on. What's going on? Get your dick in here. Oh, yeah. What's up, dude? Huh? So tell me about this sizzle reel I'm about to get, <laughs> I'm about to write up. You know, the idea is pretty simple, but we want to drive to that end. You know, we don't need to film Damon except for maybe an open and a close. Which is cool. Yeah, yeah. So where he just says something in the opening and maybe right, something. And maybe something in the closing. So I can call him when he lands. Is he going to try to get her earlier? I don't think so. Is he staying over? Yeah, he's staying. Uh, so we have a thing going on um, at the King Valley Ranch. It's a seminar. It's the live version of Damon On Demand. This is he is... selling it over there? This? No. See, is that Xerix again? Yeah. See, I'm calling Xerix again. Why wouldn't Xerix want a piece of it and sell it? That's the perfect spot to fucking sell this. I agree. Give me the 3,500 that, that didn't buy from this event. Just give, give me the emails from them. Yeah. I'll send him an email where Damon pops up and says, hey, I noticed you didn't take advantage of the $2,500 deal. Yeah. How about we give you this for $500? I'll bet you anything. Yeah. I'll pick up at least 10% of that. That's another 350. But to have the ability to go back and go through this with repetition yep. is really how you're going to master this material. Mm -hmm. But see, they don't have the... The, the stones to do it because they just charged them 25 grand to come here. Yeah. So I'm with kicking 3,500 people out. Yeah. Okay. What are they doing with them? Yeah. Nothing. Okay. So give them to me. Yeah. I'll sell 350 of them a $500 yeah. program. For sure. Imagine the ability of having Damon John on your team to train all your team members on the latest techniques, soft skills, and philosophies that are proven to accelerate growth, increase productivity, reduce turnover, and spark an enterprising spirit amongst your uh, entire organization. From the executives to the C-suite, um, introducing Damon On Demand Corporate Learning Services. This interactive learning technology allows us to deliver, track, and measure the learning and leadership needed to effectively get results. DJ says, uh, this is why I developed the system. I mean, it allows me to get the right content to the right people at the right time and provide enough repetition and accountability to make it stick. When it's not Damon, it's DOD on services can either provide, create, or aggregate the most relevant and current content to make the impact your organization has been looking for. And then maybe Damon does the <coughs> call to action. So you only see Damon twice, mm -hmm. as an example. Could we do a version though where it is in Damon first person and just get him on camera? I'd rather just have, sure. for him to read through that, it would take 10, 15 minutes and sure. have it in the can. Our technology allows this content to be delivered a couple of different ways based on who you are, what your preference, what your learning style so we can get deeper into the cut, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's great. Plus, you don't have all these experts that we've got. Plus, you're not out there in hundreds of companies that Damon is. Damon's seeing what's working in Bangladesh. He's seeing what's working here. All these millennials coming up, Damon's got that insight that your team probably doesn't have. You close them all, dude, if you start saying shit like this. They'll be like, well, what do you got? When can we get you out here? Well, that'll be $100,000. We'll come in for a two-week, uh, what do you call it? engagement and we'll talk to each department and then we'll come back to you with a proposal that basically says, you know, it's a half a million dollars.
loud scream behind me? Can we see how we look? Do you ever break out that pole? Not yet. Um, it's almost time. So that pole is from a championship bass fisherman. Mm -hmm. I just called him and said, dude, like, what is it you would wish you had if you were bass fishing? And he said, this, 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 and a whole bunch of tackle. And, just, and so that I, suitcase of a tackle box, I just, I just sent someone to get that to put it in. I just got to send it up to the house. That was one of the best presents I ever got. I appreciate it. Well, you're What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Hey, good? So this webinar has about seven thou supposedly registered. Now, my platform or yours? I, I, probably yours. Um, we did a little Facebook advertisement. We, we did a little post on mine. I only had like four or 500 on my posts. Then I think the rest is you. But you should try charging next time. Well, to Ted and these guys, I, you know, I just, I just work here, man. Ted, next time you do one of these, I mean, maybe 7,000 won't, won't go, but why not charge 49 bucks? This one here, I want to talk literally more about giving them value on really how do we take an idea to a business. Yeah. And even if you only wanted to learn what you just learned, until you do it a hundred times, yeah. it's, it's not going to stick. Yeah. Repetition's the key to learning, period. I retired when I was 30, when I was 35, I retired for three months. Got tired? Well, after your, after your wife says to you, hey, asshole, get up the couch and empty the garbage again, I mean, sooner or later, you gotta go back to work. You know what I mean? <laughs> all right, What's all right, skill shop? cool. The skill shop is basically a marketplace for anyone's content. Cardone's, uh, Tony Robbins, Paul, Damon right. John, yeah. anybody's. So when you're going through the skill shop, you'll see Damon John's Entrepreneur Academy. Mm -hmm. You can click it, buy it, and it turns on in your system. If you're a business, it'll turn on in your system, but it's priced for your right. business, yeah. not your individuals. Mm -hmm. So individuals can buy or businesses can buy. What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs. Today, folks, in the studio, do I have a treat for you. I've got the one and only People Shark, Mr. Damon John. Welcome, Damon. What's happening? Thanks for having me. Man, it's my pleasure. Finally, I've been wanting to sit side by side with you because I know that you've got the knowledge in that noggin for years. How long you been at this? Woo! I've been at it probably about, uh, I don't know, 35, 36, 37 years. I've been doing okay at it for about 25 of those years. Dropping Bombs is basically a podcast where we just shoot the shit, talk about anything and everything, and hopefully people that are listening, my listeners, which I fondly refer them to them as the bomb squad, mm -hmm. they're listening and they got their own problems and challenges and maybe we hit on one. So here's the problem though. Right? When I go to games and things of that nature, if I'm in a box and I take a snapshot of it, Instagram, people go, "Wow, you're in the you're in the uh, in, in the chief seats," because they don't know I'm you know I'm sitting back eating some uh, you know wings, all uh, endless bucket of wings. If I sit in the front seat, then somebody's ass is in my face. The camera guys, right? All right. And then if I sit in the middle, I go, "Hey man, what happened? You know, Cuban would be up front." So I just stay home, right? I stay home and I watch everything. Well, you have a beautiful new baby. I do have a beautiful new baby. Good reason to stay home. That is, that is. But don't stay home watching a fight with a beautiful new baby because she's she's busy sticking pe Peppa Pig in your face. You grew Fubu, yeah, to freaking six billion dollar empire. Yeah, you've you've invested in hundreds of companies. You've seen the right, the wrong. You've probably been right and wrong. More wrong than right. Have you ever been backstabbed? Oh yes. See, so, so, so the experience you have is like freaking unbelievable to sit here and be able to ask questions and, and, and get that knowledge. You know what always stabs you in the back of the hardest people who are negotiating with you? It's always the person with the little, the littlest amount to say. Bomb diggities everywhere. Uh, Diggity bombs. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> how does somebody, like I always think I got a t-shirt idea that I think yeah. will sell a million t-shirts. Now yeah. what happens, you go screen print a t-shirt with something funny Mm -hmm. Like, you know, anything. I got a crooked boner. Yeah. And everybody goes, man, that's the funniest t-shirt ever. And it sells out in every shop in the world. But why don't more people do that? Is that hard? What's, what's, hard. what's the challenge? It's very hard. The, the, well, first of all, the challenge is uh, 
Number one, how do you create how do you create this following behind it? Right? <laughs> really, I'm just trying to get you to repeat I have a crooked boner, but no, I'm just joking. That was, <laughs> do you want me to repeat that you have a crooked boner? No, but that was that I have a crooked boner. That, that's just a saying that if that if I saw someone with that shirt, it was funny. A saying on a t-shirt could go viral pretty easily. Why wouldn't someone just fire off a bunch of different ideas on a t-shirt? Because a t-shirt and silk screen, and then boom. Novelty shirts to people who own restaurants, to people who are just you know putting shirts out, uh, nobody can locate it. I mean, how can you go narrow and deep and locate this thing? Internet. And, and what, go narrow and deep with that? Well then now you gotta go into exactly what we're gonna talk about, marketing and branding and creative following because after you buy the shirt once, all right, now you're walking around with your I got a crooked boner shirt. What are you gonna do? Huh? Hey. You're gonna you're gonna come with the next one with I got a straight boner or I got a soft boner? <laughs> What's a soft boner? I, I'm no, confused right now. The next one is I got sand in my clam. <laughs> That's the next one. Yeah. Or your mom makes good pancakes. Yeah. Did you accidentally succeed or did you learn along the way and then eventually start applying what you're learning? I eventually started applying what I'm learning. You know, am I, is it an accident? <clears throat> not necessarily. It, was it guaranteed? Absolutely not. You know, I failed at all my first couple of business ventures. I failed at FUBU many, many times. Um, but whatever I was going to deem myself to be successful, I wasn't going to let anybody stop me. At my level of success, I would have been, been very, very happy with a clothing store that my friends and I would have ran and we'd have been able to hopefully make a living. True entrepreneurs, they act, they learn, and then they repeat. They take affordable steps and they try to learn their market and they, they start to get proof of concept. How much money? I said time, right? You said three quarters of the time. Yeah. Instead of taking 17 years, it would have taken you three to four. How much money would you have saved if you went back and started over? How, mu how much money have you lost learning this information? Well, there's two type of levels of loss, right? There was the money that I lost without having the financial intelligence and or the education, and then there was the money I lost because of squandering, not knowing how money works. I would have probably saved about $30 million over the course of, uh, over the, course of the time. 30 million smacks, and divided by 17 years, that's almost $2 million a year. The knowledge this guy's bringing was freaking off the chart bomb diggity, diggity bomb. <laughs> Damon, thanks for coming. Thanks, man. Folks, go out there, rate this, share this, you know, put a tag on Facebook and share it out there. And uh, if, if you like it, share it with someone you like. Appreciate you listening. Until next time. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. We want people to cut off that cell phone and cut the TV off and put the baby, you know, downstairs. Because we want you to get the pen and paper and start writing down this stuff. This stuff, we're going to give you a lot of knowledge. We're also going to be dropping bombs along the way. Diggity bombs, bomb diggities, bomb dizzles, if you will, <laughs> along the way. Because you just said a bomb dizzle that just went by. You basically said, don't compare yourself, prepare yourself. And I can promise you this, and I will argue with anybody, if you quit, you might as well not get started because there are roadblocks that are gonna be in your way and you better be ready to make adjustments and make moves, otherwise you might as well just hang it up now. Sometimes people think that, oh, once you start up and you get to a certain level, then you're good. No, expanding your business. You may be somebody who's doing something locally and you wanna spend to be somebody who is statewide or national or international. Most people start out they get lucky to, to build a business or two that are successful. If you're very lucky, you build three businesses that are successful. You know, if you've learned so much that you don't need David on demand, then we still did our job today, right? We're gonna teach well, that's you. the goal. Today was great. I had a, let me see, what did I do? I did a great webinar with Brad. Boy, he could talk. When he's passionate about something, the man can talk. And then I think we also did a little Facebook live stream. A lot of great information. I love going back and forth with true entrepreneurs and sharing the information with amazing other entrepreneurs out there who are gonna go out there and change the world. So I had a good time. My man Bradley, making moves.